Hello everyone, I'm Brother Mike Jackson and I will be the uh, leader today. Uh, so glad to be before you once again. Uh, theme for the year, the time is now. Uh, a theme for the quarter, the Holy Spirit. Before we get through today, uh, start off our lesson today, uh, I had a song that been carrying me through the day and I needed it because it's been a, it's been a rough week. I um, just want to share a little small devotion, then we'll move into the lesson. Uh, I'm gonna take a trip on this good old gospel ship, and I'm gonna sail it through the Your crystal path. 
Before the Spirit can lead, can lead and direct you, there are some things that you must also do. Uh, some prerequisite that must be met. I like to try to, I always say that uh, the Bible will do you very little good if you don't, know how to, you don't know how to apply it to your life. You can just read the word, read the scriptures, read the stories, but you must learn how to apply them to your everyday life in order for them to, to, to fulfill and lift you up. Uh, the Holy Spirit is designed to lead and guide us. Uh, our, in, in the civilian world, we, we love to get promoted, but before we can get promoted, there are certain things that we have to do. There are questions the boss has to ask themselves about you. Do you have the good understanding about just who you are? Your work ethics? Are you responsible? Are you trustworthy? Are you of good character? And most importantly, do you have good product knowledge? It's similar to the understanding the role of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit cannot dwell in an unprepared place. The understanding about who you are as well as whom you belong. Are you prepared to do the work? Your responsibility to God. Are you of good character and understand the word and its directional path plans? In this case, the product knowledge is the word. And are you trying to live by the word? I repeat that last phrase. The product, when it comes to the product knowledge, that's the product knowledge. The product is the word. Your understanding and your, and your understanding of the word. And are you living by them? In John 16 chapter, Christ is informing his disciples of what was yet to come, the purpose of what was forthcoming, and the need of what was forthcoming in your everyday walk. John 16, 7 and 8, and out of the King James Version, Christ states, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you to go, that you go, that I go away. For I, for I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And in verse 8, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. To give us a lighthearted, worldly example of being spoken to and how he will move you and speak to you when you find yourself at a crossroad. Let's take women, for instance. Women are gifted at birth with a strong sense of intuition. It speaks to them when something doesn't feel quite right, especially when it comes to affairs of the heart. It will alert them when something smells 10 out of 10, something is wrong 10 out of 10 times only if they don't become distracted by their emotions. You don't have to believe me, ask any woman, and she will be able to quickly recall an example of when, when she should have Followed the sense. Boy, he was looking good and saying the right things, and I became a little distracted. Intuition was speaking, but nobody was listening. A lot of times, we're being spoken to, but are we listening? The Holy Spirit is an aspect or an agent of God, by means of which people become the messenger and servant. It, is, it too will speak to believers and guide you onto the right path. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in other words, the Comforter, is with you. If you don't know the word, you won't understand it when you see it. And she knows the voice. She knows the shepherd's voice. The shepherd knows what his sheep needs. And the sheep knows that it has its own piece of the rock in the form of that shepherd in their time of need. In the book of Matthew, in the King James Version, chapter 4, Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. His body hungered. Even in his weakened, weakened uh, physical state, Jesus was able to withstand any and all temptation the devil could throw his way. Why? I'm glad you asked. He was able to sustain because he knew he was not alone. The Comforter stood with him every step of the way. When you turn your life over to the Lord, you too can rest assured that this journey through life will be yours alone to take. But you will not be alone if you, if you just make Christ your personal savior. Christ was not alone even when he was hung on the cross. And I'm not making reference to the two thieves that were hung near him. When Jesus was baptized as referenced in the first chapter of Mark, ninth chapter, 
uh, 12th verse, Mark 9 through 12, in the King James Version, by John the Baptist, the heavens opened up, and the Spirit descended upon him, and guided him into the wilderness to be tested by the evil, and to be tested by the devil. Excuse me. Jesus was not alone in his journey. The Holy Spirit was with him. Imagine fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, being hungry, tired, worn out, and now it's time to take a test. And he passed it with flying colors. Are you prepared to take that test? Are you prepared to let the Holy Spirit lead you? The Bible made reference to being tested, but to you and I, it smelled and tasted a lot like a final exam instead of a test. Christ had to go through it. The Spirit will speak to you, even if you not, even if uh, you got some word in. You got to have some word in you in order for you to let the Spirit speak to you. Our pastor always say, "What comes out of you is what in you." You get enough word in you, you get a, you, you, the word will come out of you. When that person crosses you at the traffic light and pulls in front of you, what you have in you will come out of you. Will it, what will come out? Will it be love? Or will it be hatred? The role of the Holy Spirit is to guide you. When someone in front of you at, at the register is a dollar or two short, and without thinking that I got you comes out of you. When, the, when that person on the street is begging for change to get a little something to eat, and you walk by him, but something's moved and motivates you to turn around and give the Holy Spirit, I got you. When the neighbor in the need is in need, and you have, and you just gave the role of the Holy Spirit. When that person at work that you know don't like you, and they have death in their family, and you bought the card and started passing it around, the role of the Holy Spirit. When you have the opportunity to, to even the score with the person that meant you no good, but instead you show grace and mercy, the role of the Holy Spirit. I could go on and on, but I think you get the picture. If you got God in you and the Spirit within, He will guide your path, and, and you'll be amazed at how, how powerful God is and how powerful the Word is. Decrease you and increase God. Begin to walk, and the Holy Spirit will be there to lead and direct your path. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is a, is a three-for-one combo that you must have and need during times like now. He will lead you to the book of Psalms, straight to chapter 91. Not part of chapter 91, but the whole chapter 91 to get you back on track. Whenever you're feeling down, my brothers and my sisters, thumb your fingers to the Bible, to Psalms 91, and get revived. When you are in tune with the word, the Spirit speaks. Just keep on chasing. When Mary got her visit about what was about to take place in her life, the Spirit speaks. When the donkey defied bomb in order to save his life, the Spirit speaks. When Moses gave Pharaoh the truth of what was about to come, if he didn't let my people go, the Spirit spoke. The Holy Spirit wishes to speak to you. Are you ready to be spoken to? Are you ready to receive the ultimate? Can you hear me now? The role of the Holy Spirit. Have you responded to the call of God in good faith? Are you doing what God has called you? To do the role of the Holy Spirit. If you truly believe in Christ and you're following His Word, the Spirit speaks to you. You don't understand sometimes why you do what you do, it's the Spirit moving within you. A lot of times you're doing some great and awesome things, and it makes you feel good, but you just don't understand that's the Spirit and the God in you that's moving, that's moving within you, that caused you to do the things you did. Like I spoke of earlier, when you see somebody in need and it's not, it's, it's not even a second thought, you render assistance. Not because it was the right thing to do in the eyes of the public, but it was the right thing to do in the eyes of God. Allow the Spirit to move within your life. It is the Holy Spirit who teaches us and takes us deeper and deeper into God's truth as we go along in our Christian life. In 1 Corinthians, 
the second chapter, the 10th through the 16th verse, but God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, ye the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. In, in chapter, in verse 12, now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of God, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us of God, given unto, given to us of God. What things also we speak, not into the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. In the 14th verse, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But, the, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. To be Christ-like is to know the word. God is love. Love is God. How much love do you have in your heart? If you're studying the word and you let the word live within you, you got time for that favorite news show every day, you got time to spend a little time with God. Meditate. Allow the spirit to move within you. You will see a transformation in your life. You will notice that on your job, you carry yourself differently. You don't allow things to get to you like they used to. Everybody else is wondering why you're not upset at a certain situation. Because you found peace. You found love. You found joy. The role of the Holy Spirit is to lead and guide your path. Not your brother's path. Not your sister's path. But your path. They will notice your good work. You will not be keeping your candle on the bushel. You will let your light so shine. Allow the Spirit to work on you. Allow the Spirit to work through you. Allow the Spirit to be within you. And you will notice a great difference in the way that your life is gone. If you don't like, to, if you keep on doing the same thing and getting the same results, it's about time for you to make a change. Ask God to help you. Give yourself over to God. Turn yourself, turn your life over to Him. Give yourself away. And you see how the Spirit will move within you and move within your life. If you're having issues in your family, let go and let God. Let the Spirit move within your home. If you're having issues on your job, let go. Let God. Let the Spirit move within your job. We we're, we're suffering through a, a great time right now with the pandemic. Everybody is banging their heads against the wall, wondering what, what can we do. My brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you to pray. Let God, let go, and let God. God did not give us a sense of fear. I know because we're human, we have a tendency to, to fear things, but uh, know that God is still in charge. He sits high, and he looks, he looks low. Trust him. Allow the spirit to move in your life, and you won't have time to be worried about the small stuff. But this, too, will pass. This is not our first pandemic in this world, the existence of this world, and it won't be the last. So don't get yourself upset. Let go. Let God. Understand that the role of the Holy Spirit is to lead and guide you. Will you allow him to lead you? Will you allow him to guide you? That's a personal question that only you can answer. The role of the Holy Spirit is simple. Love. Trust. Study. Practice. Let go. Let God. I'm going to close right now by letting you know that it's going to be all right. And I'm going to close with a little assurance that I love you and God loves you. and nothing you can do about it. So you might as well accept that fact. God is here. Call him up. He's here for you. Understand that the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit is here for you. And like I mentioned earlier, that's a combo that you can't resist. You can't do without. So please, my brothers and sisters, tomorrow when you get up is a brand new day. Leave all your worries behind. Trust in the Lord. 
and he shall be there to guide and direct your path, the role of the Holy Spirit. Until next time, have a great day.
Understanding what I'm saying. Wherever you are right now, I just need you to continue honoring God. Continue worshiping God. Continue praising God. Get yourself in a position to where as He gives you vision, know that God will give you provision. in that mighty and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we always say, he is definitely the reason that we are here today. And we thank him for this is the day that he has made. And we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, everybody that's chiming in right now, those that are looking at this broadcast on YouTube, uh, or Facebook, uh, those that are on Instagram, iTunes, we want you to Chime in and be a part of this worship service. Can you give God a praise right now? Could you just write it in right now? And just write in hallelujah, which is the highest praise, which is the highest praise. This morning we are thankful and we are it's just so happy. We are elated that God has given us another chance, another opportunity that we might be able to see the sun shine and that we might be able to Tell him how great he is, how awesome he is, and how wonderful God has been in our lives. We just want to thank you this morning. Even before we go into our, our scripture this morning, we want to thank everybody for everything that you have been doing to support this ministry, even in a time like this, in this pandemic. And we, we have been really uh, going through a new norm, We've seen some things that we have not seen before. We have found ourselves in places that we have not been in before. And we want to thank you for all of your support and everything that you have been doing that this ministry will continue to flourish, that we might be able to preach the gospel and that we might not only be able to preach the gospel, but that we might be able to still do ministry. Just because the four walls are closed down, I need you to understand that ministry has not stopped. Now I need you to also understand that we need your support and we continuously need your financial support um, just as well as your prayers and, and your well wishes. And for you that are part of this ministry and you find yourself uh, in a place to where you are not supporting financially, we're gonna ask that you, this is one thing that you need to petition God about and continue to do your best uh, because uh, we cannot uh, get things done without your support. We can't keep this ministry going without your support. And if you're a part of this ministry, in other words, if you're a part of Grand Hill itself, this physical church, we, we still have ways, opportunities that you may be able to give financially. You may be able to sow seeds into this ministry. You might, be, you might still be, you're still able to tithe. You're still able to give uh, an offering. Even if it's a sacrificial offering, we need your support. And we want you to understand that you are the only ones can look within yourselves and know if you are doing what you are able to do. And we're praying for you. We are holding you up before God. And we're asking that God bless you that um, this, this era that we're in is not affecting you maybe as it's affecting the world. Being believers and being those that understand who God is, uh, we must believe first that God uh, has our best interest. The Bible said that we must seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything else will be added and we must believe this. Praise the name of God. I need you to understand there are many churches right now that are going through struggles of and, and whether you know it or not, you, uh, budgets have to be changed. Bud budgets have to be revisited because of this pandemic. Uh, ministries have to be revisited. Uh, there are some ministries that we had during the time before the pandemic uh, that were going strong. And some of these ministries are, are not flourishing now. And some of them are not even needed at this particular time. 
So I need you to understand and keep in mind that we're not doing things in the normal way. Praise the name of God. And, and, and you must be cognitive of this fact. But we want to say to you that we bless you, we thank you, but we, we want to um, ask that you continue uh, to show support not only through your prayers and through worship and, and through uh, being on YouTube uh, and looking at us minister to you, praise the name of God, but we also need your financial support. And uh, even if you're not a member of this uh, church itself, uh, we still have ways that if, if God is blessing you through this ministry, we're going to ask that you help support us that we might continue to go to higher heights and deeper depths. Now this morning, our scripture lesson, uh, our scripture is going to be coming from uh, Habakkuk, the second chapter. Um, very familiar scripture for certain, some people that have been in church for years. Uh, you probably have heard this scripture, the second chapter. And I, I want to read the, um, the first through the third verse. says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for a point of time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Praise the name of God. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Praise the name of God. I want to talk about being in a perch position. Being in a perch position. May we pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you so very much for this time, this day that you have given us. Now we ask God that you let us decrease and you increase. God, that you allow your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding to rest upon us. For you say wisdom is the principal thing. But with all thy getting, allow us to get understanding. And so now we ask that you lead us. And if you lead us, we'll be led. And if you feed us, we'll be fed. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Being in a perch position, in the scripture, in the scripture, Habakkuk is putting himself, or he is, is allowing God to put himself in a position where he's able to be upon a tower. It could be naturally or it could be spiritually, to where he's able to hear God's voice and he's able to see what it is that God is actually doing in that time and in that season. And we must realize that uh, uh, in that time and in that season, God has, was doing the same as he is doing in today's time and in today's season. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. In other words, God continues to do the same as he did yesterday, today, and forevermore, just as we continue to do the same. As long as we have been on this earth, we have found ourselves in the same position over and over again. And God has patiently waited for us 
to just get ourselves together. And he has found out that there are times that we just won't get ourselves together. As much as he's done for us, he finds that his people will just be disobedient, stiff-necked, hard-headed, and any other adjective or adverb you want to put in there, that's us. And this is what God has found. As much as he blesses us, sometimes we're never satisfied. We're always looking for something else. God being our God, we look for other gods. We look for other things. Just like the children of Israel, God was blessing them. He told them that he would be their God. He would never leave them. He would never forsake them. And sometimes they found themselves in nations and other countries that, where they followed other gods. Even though there is only one true and living God, so God would be patient with them, just like he's patient with us. But God also brought judgment at times. And when he brought judgment, he brought judgment through waves of catastrophes and tragedies. And sometimes he brought judgment through plagues and diseases. Praise the name of God. Sometimes he brought uh, judgment through wars and uh, not just rumors of wars, but wars, um, conflicts in different uh, areas in their lives. And so this was to bring them back to him. And we find ourselves in the same place today. And even in those days, God would raise up prophets. He would raise up judges. He would raise up the old patriots, those that were able to hear his voice. And they would preach messages and they would prophesy. And I need you to understand, unlike today, uh, prophets and preachers were not always popular because they did not say what people wanted to hear but they really said the truth. And when you start telling the truth, I can tell you, you can find yourself in a lonely position. You can find yourself in a place that it seems that you have been forsaken. Only because you are speaking what God has laid on your heart to be true. It's easy to give a message of hope, praise the name of God, but giving a message of hope with it not being contingent upon some things that we must do ourselves is not always true. Oh yeah, God will do some things in our life because he's just in the blessing business. But at the same time, God want to do greater things in our life but that's contingent upon how we worship him. And the Bible makes it very plain that we must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so even though words come out of our mouth that make you feel good, praise the name of God, it's not always good, praise the name of God, because the truth is what makes you free. Uh, it's not what Esther said on Sanford and Son. She used to say the truth will set you free. But when you get into the scripture, it says that the truth will make you free. Uh, there's no way you can hear the truth and stay bound up. There's no way you can hear the truth and stay in bondage. There's no way you can hear the truth and keep shackles on your feet. As a matter of fact, the more truth you get into, God will look out for you, even if you're not looking out for yourself. Even if those that come up against you mean you harm, God said that I will protect you 
for even from your enemies. Praise the name of God. As a matter of fact, I will make your enemy your footstool. And you don't need a footstool unless you're going higher. Oh, praise the name of God. You're going to need something to step on to get up. Oh, praise the name of God. Not that you made them your enemy, but they made themselves your enemy. And because you are a child of God, uh, God said, I got you. I got you covered from head to toe. Praise the name of God. Habakkuk was one that was called by God. And, and he was one that was known as one of the minor prophets. Praise the name of God. And we understand the minor and major prophets, but the minor prophets are one that, that did not have a lot written down. Praise the name of God. They call them minor prophets because they had a smaller passages of scripture, smaller passages of prophetic speaking. Praise the name of God. But yet he says that I am going to stand upon my watch. Uh, and I'm going I'm to sit upon the tower. I'm going to put myself in a perch position. And I want to be able to see what is going on. I just don't want to be preaching just to be preaching to make everybody happy but, uh, or to make everybody uh, feel good. But I want to really say the things that need to be said that this, this world and that this nation and that our communities and that our cities and, and that our states will change up. And the change must start with on the, the inside of us. Oh, praise the name of God. It, it, it must start in the church. And, and we found out that the church is just not the four walls that we, we come in and we worship in and we praise the Lord in. It, it's not the, the physical building. It's not just the temple or the synagogue. But it is us, our, our mind our spirit, our soul, our body. We are the temple of the living God. Yeah. And he said, I will build my church uh, upon the rock of the declaration that I am the Christ. Uh, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, but you have to be in a perch position uh, to be able to see what it is that God wants us to do. Uh, Habakkuk looked and, and he heard from God. Yeah. And God told him, what I need you to do is write the vision. And not only write the vision, but I need you to make it plain. Uh, I need those to understand where they are in this time and place. Uh, and what they need to do to make things better. Uh, I need you to write the vision that when they read it, praise the name, uh, even while they're on their run, uh, while they're going to and fro, while they're busy, while they're tired, while they're preoccupied with other things uh, in their life, I need them to hear what it is that God is speaking and God is saying. Uh, and, and, and you have to be blind right about now to not know that we are in trouble in this world. Uh, praise the name of God. Uh, and when I say in trouble in this world, when we see what is going on, sickness has taken over once again. Uh, this is not the first time that we have gone through a pandemic. Uh, hallelujah. We can go back to the days of old in the Old Testament and the New Testament or we can just go back to some of the days that some of us have lived in this life so far. There have been other pandemics. I mean uh, 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 COVID-19 is not the first time we have lost many of lives. I mean we, we, we've gone through uh, HIV uh, pandemic. We've gone through malaria pandemic. Uh, we, we, we've gone through Many of the swine flu. Uh, we've gone through so many different things that, that has taken lives. And, and then just settle a uh, uh, pandemic, settle sicknesses of, of heart disease, uh, praise the name of God, and high blood pressure and things that us have has taken many people out. But we must admit that in 2020, we have seen so many th people leave this world that, that we thought that we would have still been having conversation with. Uh, we would have still been holding and hugging and, 
and, and talking to. Uh, we, we, we thought that we would have still been able to sit down and, 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 and break bread with them. Uh, but now they're gone. Uh, praise the name of God. And, and we find ourselves uh, even being in a place to where we have to even social distance ourselves from, from our loved ones and those that uh, that we want to be around. Uh, we are a social kind of people, uh, which means uh, we, we thrive off of each other. Uh, and now we find ourselves in lonely states. Uh, praise the name of God. And this is why uh, we must find ourselves in a position uh, to be able to hear from God clearly. Everybody said in 2020, uh, oh, I, I, I'm going to have a clear vision and I'm going to be able to see. Well, I need you to understand, God is showing us some things. Uh, it, it, it might not be what we want to see, and it might not be what we like to see, and it might not even be what we understand. Uh, but God is really showing us what kind of world we're living in. Uh, and he's really trying to turn us back to him. Uh, anytime you get people in leadership position that, that feel as though they are above God, uh, praise the name of God, then that means they make themselves God. Uh, and God is not going to share his glory with anyone that thinks that they're God. Uh, there's only one God, the God of Abraham, Isaac. And Jacob, uh, all praise the name of God. Uh, and, and so God is looking at us in 2020. And he's saying, I need my, my servants, I need my prophets, I need those that are worshiping, those that are leaders. I need you to be in a perch position. I, I need you to be ready to be able to take flight. Uh, after I show you what it is uh, that I'm doing in this time and season. Uh, I'll praise the name of God. Uh, and so he, he says to that, I need you to write the vision, make it plain. Uh, well, what is the vision? What is the vision, Pastor? I need you to understand that the church is not about to close down. Uh, ministry is not about to stop. Uh, I'll pray to the devil. The devil in hell can go back to hell if he thinks he's going to stop anything that God has set in motion. Huh. I'll pray to the name of God. And I need you to understand that God needs us to be in the right place. Huh. Pray to the name of God. Huh. And sometimes that might mean that, that you have to isolate yourself. Huh? You have to pull back, uh, praise the name of God. There are so many schools of thoughts uh, and so many opinions these days, uh, praise the name of God, uh, that we, we, we can get caught up and not do anything that God is asking us to do. I look at this time now and I look at our, I'm, I'm, I don't call myself a politician, but I look at this time now and, 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 and voting and, and registration and it's time to, to vote for a new president. How could you even be in this world and not know how important that is? Praise the name of God. How could you even be living in this world and not take responsibility uh, to, to take the rights that have been fought for? I need you to understand, being able to vote wasn't, wasn't just given to some people, praise the name of God. Being able to vote wasn't just given to some people. Some people had to fight for that. Our people had to fight for that for us to be able to vote and for you not to vote. And, and then I am looking at, look, just look at what's going on uh, uh, with the social distance. And now, oh, you can't go to the polls because there's going to be so many people out there. And, and so now let's do absentee and, and all of this. And, and do you not even see the trickery in any of this? I mean, many of you, what, what you worrying about uh, the polls now and how many people are going to be out there, but you ain't Walmart. You ain't Walgreens. You ain't Ross. You ain't Cato. You ain't J.C. Penney's. You ain't Bell's. You ain't the mall. You ain't the restaurants. Praise the name of God. You, you at the beach. 
You in swimming pools. You everywhere else you want. You on your job. Praise the name of God. You, you working in companies and factories that got 400 and 500 people. Praise the name of God. And you worrying about that. And I mean, and even, and I'm, I'm going as far as is, is the fact that we, you know why people not back in church? Uh, and, and you can be at work, you got 400 people at work, but then you come back to church. You know why people not coming back to church? Because most pastors, most leaders know that just as soon as you come back to church and somebody, or uh, or content, or uh, uh, COVID-19, they're going to pick on the church. They're, they're, they're going to pick on the pastor. Now you can you can you can get COVID nineteen. You can get the virus anywhere else, but they're going to say that that man or woman of God should have known better. You know? Do you not even see the trickery in where we are today? Praise the name of God. Uh, 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 if, if you allow the same foolishness to continue to go on. Praise the name. There, there's no need next year in 2021, if God allow us to see that, there's no need for anybody to complain about anything that's going on. Our country is pretty much bankrupt. Praise the name of God. Uh, uh, we, are, we are moving off of a uh, of bankrupt deficit. You give it out money that you don't have. Praise the name of God. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You know, there are people, you do your taxes uh, year after year after year. When you owe them the IRS, do they not get their money? Well, there are some people that the, the, IRS, the government owe us. When are we going to get our money? Praise the name of God. And, and who are you going to put in office that's going to be qualified enough or going to be bold enough to, to have what you think is important uh, for them to, to bring up and them to fight for you. Praise the name. Now, just don't be voting for people because of their skin color and because of their gender and because of their party. Praise the name of God. I need you to understand there are some evil Republicans and there are some evil Democrats. You better hear what I'm saying. There are some evil uh, conservatives and there are some evil liberals. Praise the name of God. Uh, I need you to understand that. Uh, just like there are some good and bad black and white, Chinese, praise the name, uh, Japanese, German, uh, 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 Hawaiians, uh, every, every nationality that it is, there are good and bad people in. Praise the name of God. And until we set ourselves in a position to really see the heart and the soul of man, Praise the name of God. There are just some bad people in your church. Praise the name. There are some bad people in your family. There's, there's just some bad folks. I mean, they, didn't, they grew up with the same mother and father, and there are just some bad siblings. Praise the name of God. Everybody's not the same. Everybody's personality is not the same. Praise the name of God. And you better understand this. Where we are today, where, what are we talking about? Uh, what, why are we still in the place that where we, we have to beg people to do what's their responsibility? If you're over 18, you ought to be arrested. And you ought to be voting. Praise the name of God. Somebody say, well, I, I, I don't believe in, in, in the political system. And, well, that's fine. Uh, praise the name of God. Uh, but you don't believe in a lot of other things that you do it. <laughs> Praise the name of God. So don't let that stop you. Go on. Praise the name. Uh, listen, and, and, and it's just the bottom line. It, it, the absentee, sending in your ballot, or being there in the presence, just go. Praise the name of God. And see what happens. Because God is looking at us. If we want to change this world, praise the name, we want God to change the world, God is waiting for us. It's continuing upon what we do. And as I sit in the perfect position, I, I want you to understand that God is speaking to our hearts and our minds. Uh, 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 we are preaching and we are still preaching and getting souls saved and, and letting people know that God is good. Uh, but I need you to understand it, 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 it's, it, it's beyond just being saved by God and knowing that God has, has given and sacrificed 
sacrifice his life and sent his son for us to have eternal life. It's more than that. We are still living in this world. And if we receive the Holy Spirit, there's work that the Holy Spirit wants to do. Praise the name of God. And, and, and we have to submit ourselves to God to allow God to push us forward. Uh, praise the name of God. Uh, but you first must be in the position to where you are not just listening to what everybody else is saying. Some people are full of fear and, and, and they are, are, are right now they're, they're, they're stabilized, they're, they're comatose, they're, they're in one position, they're complacent because of COVID-19. Everything that comes across the television, the radio, uh, they believe it. Uh, praise the name of God. Uh, uh, and I need you to understand that there are more lies out there than there are truth these days and time. Uh, and you better be able to get into the word of God and understand where we are. Let's look at this thing. I mean, if you go, if you go to Mark, the 13th chapter, Jesus even had, he had a conversation with his disciples. And he said to them, there, there's going to be a time. And, and, and I can tell you when you know the end is going to come, pray the name of God. And he says it in the 13th chapter. He said there's going to be rumors of wars and, 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 and nations are going to rise up against nations. Uh, that, that's what he said. And kingdoms are going to rise up against kingdoms. Uh, there are going to be earthquakes, to pray the name of God. You know, we always were hearing about earthquakes. You know, on the West Coast and in California, here we are in South Carolina, and they said they had an earthquake in North Carolina. That's on the East Coast. Praise the name of God. It's, it's, it's getting closed now. Uh, and, and he said, listen, uh, uh, when this stuff take place, he said, don't be alarmed. These things must take place. Uh, and it is not yet the end. He's telling you, no, it's still not yet the end. We have to be able to watch out for those in this time that will be willing, they're able to deceive us. Pray the name of God. He said, you better be you better be on watch. You better be in a perfect position because you can get deceived by those that are saying many things. Some will be using scripture. Pray the name of God. Huh? But, but if you telling everybody that they're just going to be blessed in this time, everybody's not going to be blessed in this time because God is allowing certain things to happen that we might turn ourselves back to Him. He said, if my people that are called by my name uh, shall humble themselves. Uh, that's what He said. He said, I need them to seek my face uh, and turn from their wicked ways. Now, then will I hear from Him. Now we can hear from heaven. Uh, we have to look at ourselves, not anybody else. Uh, Oh, uh, look in the mirror and see yourself uh, and make sure you understand uh, that you have infirmities, uh, that you have issues, uh, that you have problems, uh, that you can't do anything about. Uh, you got issues that God and only God can fix, uh, but you got to give them to God. Oh, uh, praise the name of God. Yeah, go ahead and run to your husband, run to your wife, run to your children, uh, run to your pastor. Run to your deacons. Uh, pray the name. You're going to find yourself in a place that they can't help you at all. Huh? Uh, and you're going to find yourself in a place that sometimes people don't even want to help you because they're too preoccupied in their own problems. Oh, praise the name of God. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? But God is patient enough uh, saying, get yourself in a position huh, where I can talk to you. Huh? Get yourself in a position where I can bless you. Huh? Well, Pastor, what are you saying? How can I get myself out? Well, you need to open up your heart. Huh? You need to talk to God huh? and tell God exactly how you're feeling. Huh? Tell God that you are in a place huh, of loneliness. Huh? You're in a place of misunderstanding. Huh? You're in a place of doubt. Huh? You're in a place of sickness. Huh? You're in a place of disease. Uh, tell God that your mind, uh, hallelujah, needs to be regulated by Him. Uh, tell God that you need Him more than you needed Him before. Uh, tell God, hallelujah, how much you love Him. Uh, and how much, and not just tell Him, uh, but praise Him and show Him. Uh, and allow Him to know uh, where your heart
what desires really are. Huh. Habakkuk found himself huh, in a place and he said, oh, write the vision and make it plain. Huh. And though the vision's here, I need you to wait on it. Huh. I need you to have just as much patience as I have. Huh. Because I'm waiting on y'all huh, to get y'all self together. Huh. Pray in the name of God, I knew I created you, and I didn't create you to be like this. I created you to be a praiser and a worshiper. I created you that I might hear your voices cry out to me. I created you, hallelujah, that you would lift my name on high. Hallelujah, somebody say, come and magnify the Lord with me. Oh, praise the name of God. I came by that you might be able to call on God, whether you're on the mountaintop or you in the valley. Oh, praise the name of God. I came by that you might be able, hallelujah, to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I came by that you might gird up your loins with truth and shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Get the shield of faith, the heaven of salvation, and the sword of God. Because of their rumors and wars, I need you to know we are not just talking about a war between the United States and another country. We're not talking about the war between Israel and Lebanon. Israel and Egypt. Israel, hallelujah, and Iraq. Pray to Iran. But we are talking about the war that's going on on the inside of us. Paul said, I looked at myself and I found out that there was a war going on on the inside of me. Pray to the name of God. And I need you to understand that even being a believer, that does not exempt us from what's going on in this world. If you were kind enough to allow me to make my point, I'm thinking back in the time of Elijah. I'll pray in the name of God. And just like this pandemic, Elijah had to go through a time of drought. Pray in the name of God. Israel went through a time of drought. And yet, Elijah was a man of God, the spokesperson for God. He went through the drought just like everybody else did. But the Bible said that he found himself at the bank, at the brink of a river. And an old dirty bird, a raven came by. Hallelujah. And fed him. Hallelujah. And I came by to tell you, if you were shown up the leader, you got to believe that in the midst of the drought, that God got your back. You're not going to go hungry because God is going to still feed you. I always pray, if you feed me, I'm going to be fed. If you leave me, I'm going to be led. I'm in a perfect position because I'm ready to take flight. For the Bible says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings of an evil. They that said, where can I go? Where are you not there? If I take the morning wings and go to the other part, you are there. If I go to the deepest part, the sea, you are there. If I made my bed in hell, you are there. But I'm in a perfect position. I'm ready. Whatever you say, God, whatever you do, I'm ready. Whatever you're doing in your season, just don't do it without me. Oh, praise the name of God. Somebody say, but that sounds selfish. No, it doesn't. I know that God created us to do Hallelujah. Let thy will be done on hell as in heaven. Let it be done on earth. And I came by to tell you, you are the one that God is looking for. Get yourself in a perfect position. Let me explain this to you. 
I heard a story at one time, and many of you probably heard the same story uh, uh, about an eagle uh, that didn't know he was an eagle because he was surrounded by chickens. Praise the name of God. Anybody, and, and maybe I'm a country boy, so I know all about chickens and, and hogs and, and cows and things that I saw. But I need you to understand that he did not know that he was an eagle because he was surrounded by chickens. He was in a chicken yard. Until one day, he looked up and he saw a bird way up in the sky that looked like him. Oh, praise the name of God. And I need you to understand the chickens, the chickens couldn't see the bird in the sky. Like this eagle could see the bird in the sky. Because the eagle has vision that goes beyond any other bird. Praise the name. And it was only until he saw that eagle up in the sky that he realized that he was able to do the same. Praise the name of God. Uh, uh, and, and he got himself in a position to where he could take off and go high. What I'm saying today is that we have to not let the position or the place that we in now keep us from being where God has called us to be. Praise the name of God. And, and so the evil himself found out that he had capabilities that he never would have known he had if he had just hung out with the chickens. Huh? And I came out to tell you we are in a position. We must get ourselves in a position that we just don't hang out with the chickens. Huh? The church must go forward and we must be like the eagle. Huh? Now the eagle has a vision. Now, and I need you to understand that the eagle get high in the sky. Praise the name of God. Uh, and the eagle can see miles away. Uh, uh, praise the name of God. And, and so when the eagle is looking, uh, if the eagle sees a rabbit, uh, praise the name of God, uh, uh, he swoops down for the rabbit uh, because of the vision that God has given him. Uh, once he swoops the rabbit up, uh, now he has provision. Uh, and I need you to understand this is what the God is saying to the church today. Huh? Don't let this pandemic, huh? don't let COVID-19 huh? keep us in a chicken's coop. Huh? The praise the name of God. Huh? We must get ourselves huh? in a perfect position. Huh? Be ready to spread our wings. Huh? Be ready to hear the voice of God. Huh? Write the vision huh? and make it plain. Huh? And I came by the tail huh? that the vision is you can go and tell it, I'm going to wait on it. Because I understand that if God gives you vision, he will give you provision. Pray in the name of God. And if anybody out there understand what I'm saying, wherever you are right now, I just need you to continue honoring God. Continue worshiping God. Continue praising God. Get yourself in a position to where as he gives you vision, know that God will give you provision. You got to have the faith, the goals, the substance of things hopeful, and the evidence of things not seen is going to show up. You got to walk by faith and not by sight is going to show up. Pray the name of God, and you got to realize that the battle is not yours but it's the Lord's and God is going to show up but get yourself in your perfect position be ready to rise up and one thing I like about eagles they just don't fly but they get above the wind and they begin to soar and I need you today to look at your problems look at the tragedies that's happening in your life Look at the mishaps and say, I'm going to soar above anything that comes my way. Lost my job. I'm going to soar. I was sick. I'm going to soar. Lost my spouse. I'm going to soar. Praise the name of God. I'm going to soar. Ain't no devil in hell going to bring me down. I'm going. I'm in 